I can see. I can, I can see. I can see. I can see you. I can also see you. I can see all of you. Oh, I can see. Oh, oh, what a miracle. I can see. Whoa. Oh, I haven't quite learned to gain my balance yet since I found my good fortune. Whoa. It's so nice to be able to see all of you. None of you know or recognize my figure. You have no idea who I am. Even if I were to tell you my name, you would never recognize it because it was never, it was never recorded in the scriptures. My story tonight is, is one of many, one of many stories that have never been told. Encounters with Jesus, miracles. I suppose if there was a label that you could put on me, I could use the word witness. Yes, witness. Someone who is, who's seen something. Someone who has witnessed something. Somebody who's been involved in somebody, experienced it. That's why I'm here tonight, to share my story. The most amazing and fascinating story it is. I know that looking out at you, you have no idea that I was ever born blind. Yes, blind. Oh, what a hideous time it was. Something that you would never, ever want. For you to be born today, you would have no idea what it was like. You see, you have trained people to help you, help you with people to come, come over to handicaps, trained teachers to, to help people with, to understand how to use their other senses, people to help come over the horrible blindness that I had to experience. Oh. You have to realize that for the Jews, for you to be blind meant one or two things. It meant that either you sinned while you were in your mother's womb or you were being punished. Punished for something that your father did or your father's father did. I could never understand that. Being blind, we were just outcasts. We were beggars. Oh, the taunting, the pity, the disdain, the mockery, over and over and over again, until finally, <laughs> until finally, we realized that we were just worse than useless. Oh. <sighs> Feeling. Every day I would go out to one of my paths and I would sit down on the ground with my legs crossed, holding my hands out, begging. I could hear people walk by. There were a few that would stop. They may put a coin or a a piece of food in my hand. There were very few of those people. I heard so many walk by. <laughs> and then there were those who liked to play games with you. They would walk by. They'd take a scrap of food. Say, here, beggar, catch this. <sighs> Sometimes it would hit me in the shoulder or the head or my forearm, or my chest, even my chin. I actually got quite good at catching it. If I could feel it right away, I could grab it. There. Especially if it's on my head. But sometimes I missed. But I knew, I knew it was only within an arm's length away. 
<laughs> that is was as if I wasn't fighting a dog off for the scrap. We had no hope. We had no hope. The only hope we had was a miracle from God. And miracles just weren't that plentiful. And this is really where my story begins. I had heard people talking about this man, Jesus of Nazareth. Some said he was a great teacher. Others said he had more compassion than any other man. I heard others say, he's a sinner. Don't go near him. He's a heretic, a blasphemer. Don't be seen near him. I didn't know if he was a sinner or not. Anyway, I could feel the crowd starting to pressure in. I could hear people talking, so I knew, I knew he was getting closer as they pressed in. All at once, Jesus was standing there. I couldn't see him, but I knew by the people talking that he was there. Oh, and then I heard the worst question I hated. The disciples said, Who sinned? This man or his parents? Oh, how I hated that. I despised that question. Oh, I was asked that over and over all my life. Why is it? Why is it that I was born blind? What was it that I did so bad in my mother's womb that I was born blind? Or was it something my father or my father's father did? And I'm being punished for it. I would never know. And then and I heard, heard Jesus say something that I'd never heard before. Neither this man nor his parents have ever sinned. This man is blind so that God can perform his works on him. I didn't know what he was saying. I didn't know what it meant. And then... He said the most beautiful words. As long as I am on the world, I will be the light of the world. Oh, what a beautiful word, light. I'd heard people talk about light. They talked about it in the sky. Some called it the sun. Oh, I would like to see this, this light. I know on cool afternoons, I could feel the warmth on my back. Oh, what I would give to see light. But would I ever see it? I would never know. And then, I, I really don't remember what happened later. But I do remember the crowd was gathering in pressure and pushing as this Jesus got near to us. And it wasn't until then that they told me what happened. They said, Jesus actually walked up by you and stood beside you. He spat on the ground. He spat on the ground and he leaned over and he stirred the dust and the spat to make some mud. He picked it up in his hands. They said he pushed it into his eyes with his thumb, thumbs. I remember I could, I could feel the tenderness of his fingers on my cheek as he pressed that mud in my eyes. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know if I should run away. I was stunned. Huh. I'm sure for most of you that sounds pretty barbaric. But for us to have the saliva from a great man, it had 
security powers within it. It was then that Jesus, Jesus said, rise, rise and go to the pool of Siloam and wash your eyes. <laughs> and for the first time in my life, there were two people on either side of me actually took my arms and actually lifted me up. Oh. I was astounded. They turned me and they walked me to the edge of the city to where this pool of Siloam was. I could feel the warmth of the water around my ankles and then my legs and then at my waist. I was trembling. I reached down into the water and I rinsed my eye out. I did it again and I rubbed my eye. I rubbed my eyes more until I thought they were clean. And for a split second, I was afraid to open my eyes. But I started to open them and the light, the light just screamed in like sharp needles shooting in my eye. Oh, they stung. They hurt. I kept blinking. But I didn't mind the pain. I, something's happening. And as a little while went by, I was able to kind of keep my eyes open. And I looked down. And I saw water. The water that I even bathed in. I never knew what it looked like. And then I noticed the sky, the blue sky. I didn't know what colors were. All I knew was people would say the sky was blue. If that's blue, it's beautiful. <laughs> and the sun, the brightness of the sun, shine on my face. Oh, I was dumbfounded. And then, and then I turned. I turned to a young lady that was beside me, by, beside me that helped me. She had a nice smile, friendly smile. <laughs> I reached up and I touched her forehead and down her cheek and her eye and her nose and her mouth and lips and her chin. This is the first time I saw a person's face. Oh, 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 what a beautiful face. Oh, I was so excited. They told me that we needed to get back to the city, so we headed back. They helped guide me. And as we went there, we passed garden flowers, beautiful flowers. The colors were outstanding. I didn't know what colors were, but they were beautiful. I don't even know what beautiful means. Oh. As we walked into the city, I spent the rest of the afternoon just enjoying my newfound joy, walking around and just observing. <laughs> there aren't any of you here tonight that we never remember being born. I know. On that day, I was born again. I was born because I could see. My eyes were open. <laughs> and that really is my story. <laughs> Just that simple, isn't it? I was blind, and I met Jesus now I can see. Well, <laughs> there is still a little bit more to my story I really would love to share with you. You see, they were trying to catch up with us. And they knew that the, the elders were going to catch up with us. And they wanted to determine, they determined to make this Jesus, guilty. 
they tried to put holes in his story of this whole thing. The Pharisees were determined to know if there was something amiss in it. Over and over they, they called me in. Over and over they asked me, has he sinned? Tell us he has sinned. I didn't know if he sinned. I didn't care if he sinned. They said, give glory to God. Again, they taunted me. Oh, they used their intellectual arguments to try to shoot holes in any good things that people would say about Jesus. Huh. Now, wouldn't you think, wouldn't you think that people would be joyful about my newfound fortune? Be glad. Be glad for me. He can see. But that wasn't the case. It wasn't the case at all. They ignored me. They shunned me. They didn't want to even be seen talking to me. That was terrible. So, so I, I went back, and I, I remember seeing Jesus again. Over and over, he told me, Everything was fine. Even my parents, even my parents denied me. You would think of all people, they would stand beside me, support me. The Pharisees would ask them questions, and they would say, ask him. He's of age. Don't ask, ask questions. He can answer. And then it was when the Pharisees actually really found out the whole story of what happened on that Sabbath. The mud, the water, happening all on the Sabbath. They did have a case against Jesus for breaking the Sabbath. And again, they questioned my parents over and over. I guess... I really couldn't blame my parents for denying me. You see, if you were ever caught or seen near Jesus, walking with him, talking with him, standing by him, you were liable to be doomed from the uh, Sabbath or the uh, church. <laughs> Sorry or excommunicated from the synagogue. Over and over they, they would taunt me, try to make me dispel this Jesus. Over. It got louder and louder, the jeering and the loud noise. I finally, I finally said, I am not going to play with his games anymore. I'm not going to put up with it. <laughs> I don't know if it was a burst of courage or if I was just delirious in my newfound joy. I said to them, isn't it interesting that you have so much interest in this Jesus? Why is that that you ask so many questions? Are you interested? Do you want to become one of his disciples? <laughs> well, you can probably imagine that didn't quite go over very well. I should have been content with my little uh, victory conversation, but I wasn't. I pressed on. I pressed on harder. And I said, isn't it extraordinary that, that this man was able to make a blind man see, to open his eyes? Isn't that extraordinary? Something that only God could do. And you, you of all people, you religious leaders, don't even know him. 
Isn't that amazing? <laughs> well, at that time, they just went into an uncontrollable rage. I was soon banned from the synagogue. I didn't care. I wasn't about to betray Jesus at this time. You have to... I thought when being blind, being an outcast was the worst thing there was, but I didn't know I was wrong. People would avoid you if you were banned from the synagogue, not talk to you, be seen around you, abandon you. Oh, the time went on and on that I was so lonely. And then, and it was then that Jesus reappeared in the picture. And it wouldn't be till later that I fully understood how and why that this was the way Jesus worked. When you were in your lowest despair, Jesus would be there to take your hand and give you strength and lift you up. He looked at me and he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? I didn't know what to say. I said, Lord, show me, tell me, who is this person? And I will believe. And he said to me, you have seen this person. The one talking to you is he. I dropped to my knees and I said, oh, Lord, I believe, I believe, I believe. And there was time after that that before we could ever understand really how Jesus worked. For those of you who are on this side of Easter and Good Friday, if you take away anything, take away the words from my lips. Look, look at the cross. Look at the cross and know there's victory. Victory. It wouldn't be after the resurrection and the ascension and even time after that that we would really begin to know. Jesus did let us in on one of the secrets of the universe. And that really is my story. As I said, a pretty simple story. But yet a story that changed my life forever. I was blind. But now I can see. Gentle healer came into our town today. He touched blind eyes and the darkness left to stay. But more than the blindness, he took their sin.